Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I knew holding on to this video would be a good idea. And I'm Gary, and today we're going to review and discuss Eliminators, which came out in 1986, written by Paul DeMeo and Danny Bilson, and directed by Peter Manugian. Yeah, why don't you give us the synopsis? Okay, for a change, I'm going to read the back. In a hidden fortress, concealed by an impenetrable jungle, dwells Dr. Abbott Reeves, a brilliant but devious scientist who has the power to create and the will to destroy. He must be eliminated. Colonel Hunter has the brains to mastermind the operation. Fontana, the river rat, and is most dangerous when cornered. Coochie, the ninja, with the martial skills to destroy his enemies. The mandroid, more machine than man. His special powers will determine whether they, whether they live or they die. Each one is the ultimate specialist in his field. Together, they are the Eliminators. Yeah, we need to watch that. Oh, well, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a Charles Band production. Yeah. This is back in uh, Empire uh, Pictures, unfortunately, before, you know, they got closed down. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, but this is like one of their more, well, one of their less known <laughs> films. Yeah. Uh, even though this one had a theatrical release, it didn't really do very well theatrically. No. Uh, but got a lot of its money back uh, on, on VHS rental stores. You know, this would be one of those films that you'd see in the blockbuster. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you'd be like, look. Look at this VHS cover. I, Look at all of these characters on the front. I doubt that dude in treads is in the movie. Put it back on the shelf. <laughs> Unless, of course, you did actually rent this one out. <laughs> yeah. And then in which case, you're going to have a lot of nostalgia for this movie. What is this, anyway? Some kind of goddamn comic book? We got robots. We got cavemen. We got kung fu. Well, that's it, all right? I quit. I, I I can't really remember how I got the videotape. Somebody lent it to me. I think they said, Ian, I know you like bad movies. Here's a bad movie. I tried to watch it once. It was late. I may have had a few beers. And all I remember is a guy on treads. And I don't remember anything more after that. But uh, my mind said to me, Ian, this movie is so bad. Don't ever watch it. Just, just don't ever watch it ever again. And so it sat on my shelves. And... Like, I remember when we first started the show, like, I saw it and I'm like, Gary, we should do this. And Gary's like, no, that movie's so bad, Ian. There are so many better movies. We could just, it's so bad. I'm like, okay, okay. And then it came to the time where we were looking for bad movies and we decided on Eliminators. And I'm like, okay, luckily I've saved the videotape. I don't know why something told me don't throw it away. This is a, a, a an unknown movie. Like, nobody, I think, has seen this. Or if they have, like, if you're a pure Eliminators fan, then you need to be like, show me all the merchandise you may have bought other than just the <laughs> one videotape. I don't know. I think they're like Borg Star Trek character figures, yeah, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the lineup, like, for the movie is like a video game. You know, the, the, the start of the movie kind of threw me off because it's, it's like a narration plus flashback all in one. We've got this pilot, you know, and he's going to crash. And all of us, it's, it's played over the top of just this image of the mandroid that we will get used to see. You know, you just see the, like, the, the, the kind of plastic covering, I suppose, <laughs> going over his eye. And he's talking about how he's crashed. And then we're then, we're then greeted by some Roman centurions. Right. So we're like, well, what, what is this? <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. Something hits one of their shields. He drops it. They run away. And you're like, okay, this, 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 this must be all interconnected. That's, uh, well, it, it, we soon find out because we, the, uh, the I keep calling him Manborg. <laughs> <laughs> the Mandroid. Yeah. <clears throat> we find out is literally time traveled because he returns to the present. Yes. Present. 1980s, yeah. <laughs> uh, with this Centurion shield. And we have not one, but two mad scientists. Yeah, you know, we've got one who, who's calculating something. We've got another one with a disfigured face who's yeah. plugging something into his stomach and feeding this liquid to it. You're like, what is actually going on? Yeah. Um, and so one of these scientists is like, okay, we're, we're done with, with Mandroid now. You know, he's useless. Dispose of him. That's Dr. Reeves, the mad evil scientist. He's talking to Dr. Takada. And you, you can already tell that Dr. Dr. Takada has got the good side 
about him because you know he's he's inquisitive of what the the mandroid has seen and where he's gone. And I I do I love the fact that the mandroid, like okay, his outfit is mostly polystyrene. I expect, but you know. I do love a bit of a rubber suit. And the actor kind of plays the whole... He's not completely taken over by the machinery. I mean... Sure, yeah. You know, it, his humanity is still kind of there. Yeah, it has kind of a cosplay look and feel <laughs> to it. Yeah, yeah. It seems very cheap. But it's still, it's effective for the, you know, for the realms of, of, of a Charles Band production. Oh, totally. It, it looks pretty damn good. And all the time <laughs> I'm just thinking, where's the treads? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is it. The... the, the... Dr. Reeves, uh, played by Roy Dotrice, you know, he explains to Dr. Takada, look, I I'm done with the Mandroid now. I, uh, you take out his memory core. I've got all the necessary uh, information from his travel through time, what I need for my experiment. You know, I assume, uh, like, his body is dying and he yeah. needs to transfer himself into some kind of upgrade. And Takada's kind of, you know, taken back by this because the the mandroid is still in there. He's still alive. Yeah. So there's a spark of humanity he doesn't want to kill. And there's he's... that nice moment where he tells the mandroid that he did a good job on his yeah. mission. Yeah. It's just like still treating him like a person, not a robot. Yeah. I mean, obviously that just sets Doctor Reeves as the bad guy. And I I loved looking up this movie because the guy playing Doctor Reeves. Do you know what else he was in? Go on. He was the king in Hellboy Two that gets killed at the beginning. Uh, yeah, I was like, I like, I saw this grey beard, and I'm like, I know that grey beard, and then Wikipedia, Wikipedia saves the day again. But Takada and the Mandroid, they're going to escape, and the Mandroid gets his wheels. Oh my God, is the Mandroid pimping in this movie? <laughs> I need the mobility unit, <laughs> and yeah, we get to see the Mandroid on treads, just going through these tunnels, going through these corridors, blasting laser beams, killing security guards. I gotta give the actor credit; like he controls this thing quite well, I suppose. Well, or apparently it's there's, well a, there's a small person inside the inside the treads actually remote controlling it for right. him. Oh, okay. Uh, although the actor did say he did fear for his life several times when the <laughs> when the thing was about to turn over or collapse or crash because <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't control its acceleration or anything. He just had to hold on and pretend to be shooting people. No, that's what I thought because like his body is in this metal thing and I'm like, okay, I I don't see a joystick. So so somebody must be controlling it off screen, but that means he's just like at the will of this oh, yeah, person absolutely. and have to go. And they they are finally confronted by some guards and Takada is killed. And the the mandroid has to try to escape and you get these two uh, brothers, like I was, I was well in the cheesiness when Takada died and gave his lines. Yeah. <laughs> but then when the two guards pulled out this giant sniper rifle with three red lights, and this weapon is supposed to disable the mandroid, I'm like this. This film's so goofy. <laughs> I recognise that actor with the big, the big rifle gun. Yeah. I was like, that, 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 that's Maul Santa from Transfers. No way. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it's not, not his most recognisable role because only a few years from now he'd be fighting Terminators in he's, Terminator Two. He's the barman. I can't let you take the boys' wheels. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> from fighting mandroids to. Stop in Terminators. That that's amazing, but the Mandroid is slightly disabled. Like the, the 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 mobility unit is hit, and his weapon is damaged. And I I love the fact. Like I must have missed it um, when he first got on there. But when he disconnects himself, he has to reconnect his legs. his legs. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So we don't know exactly how much damage this pilot had taken when he crashed. Like he must have been pretty much close to death from the rest of his body uh, damage. But he then makes his way to try to find Colonel Nora Hunter, played by the amazing Denise Crosby. Like, oh wow. <laughs> of course, this is a full year before uh, TNG would be started, where, you know, uh, Tasha Yar yeah. or Denise Crosby would pretty much become a, a household name, at least for a, a small while anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, she was killed by her son, Pet Cemetery. Yeah. But I did always love her performance in Deep Impact. Yes, you know, that was yes. a pretty damn good performance. 
but like she's she's working on spot. <laughs> I have to say this film's got you know the the, the special effects in this were done oh. by John Carl Beekler, right. who we've talked about in the past, like some of the amazing special effects work um, in, in in this film and the films going forward. Yeah, uh, you know, like one of the names to look out for when you see his name pop up in a film, you know. You're going to see some fantastic some special, special effects, effects of yeah. some kind, except <laughs> spot the, or the robot like thing. I was like, this is the cheapest, poorest R two D two knockoff thing that there possibly yeah. could be. It, it's so cheap looking. It's it, so bad. It is so bad, and it even chirps like R two D two that only <laughs> like, how, she can understand. That's it. She puts this thing in her head to talk to it, right? Yeah. So they talk. So psychically but then again like I swear there's a couple of scenes where she doesn't actually need the thing in her head, ear she yeah. talks to it just normally and it communicates um, and obviously the mandroid will be able to communicate it as well because they're both electronic but the way it <laughs> it moves super speed so it turns into this weird blue light thing yeah. and just kind of shoots around the screen really fast <laughs> what happens when you show off it's so shit <laughs> it's so bad but i'm not i i'm so drawn into it because i've already seen the super sniper scope from the beginning of the movie yeah. so this doesn't spoil me no no but we have these two goofy security guards and one of them one of them's just like hey buddy uh we just had a power surge uh, like over at the east gate and his mate's like oh it must be a cat and i'm like you've got a lot of cats <laughs> like we had that great landscape shot of the city and i kind of sat there like new york Los Angeles, Idaho, I don't know. We're in America somewhere. I know we go to Mexico, so we must... Right. We, this, this is somewhere in America we are, in some science lab. And the security guard goes to where he, you know, the sensor's been let off. And he's like, hey, buddy, look, I think we've got a problem over here. And, you know, something's ripped open the gate. <laughs> but his mate's been completely knocked out. And then we realise that the mandroid has infiltrated this base and used knockout gas to take the security guards out. <laughs> but then when we finally see the mandroid, he's literally just wearing like a raincoat <laughs> yes! and a hat. And it's like, yes! how did you sneak through wearing that? Because he's fucking solid snake, mate. He's fucking master of stealth. <laughs> okay. So now Hunter and, and the mandroid, or, or John, as we get to uh, find out his name, the, the two of them communicate because... We find out that Dr. Reeves kind of stole some of Dr. Hunter's... Computer, technology, yeah, yeah. computer cyborg technology. And this is what he's he's utilising. Um, because, I mean, Ma Mandroid's also pretty beaten up at this point. Yeah. And she's like, I can actually do these repairs. I know oh, the circuitry. And, uh, and let me have a look at this. And she finds out. You know that his memory has been reduced. Yeah. Um. That so that he's not going to become self-aware or take over or go on in a killing rampage and kill all the security guards. Oh wait, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, but she makes that interesting observation that you know it's uh, that he's got limited memory capacity, mm. uh, but it's it's broken anyway, and she can just leave it so that he'll have his brain memory capacity. Yeah. I was like, you know, it's got it's very you know touches of RoboCop here. I'm like, this is and, very, obviously very inspired by RoboCop. Terminator Two. Special edition. Yes, yeah, When yeah, they're yeah. fixing, you know, Arnie's brain and they're like, oh, should we destroy the chip? I'm looking at the mandroid. I'm like, you set the benchmark for all of these guys. <laughs> so you weren't just the sole inspiration for Manborg. Yeah. But you helped inspire Robocop and Terminator as well. <laughs> so after being fixed, the mandroid says to Dr. Reeves, look, I'm returning back to Mexico because I'm going to confront Dr. Reeves for what he's done to me but he doesn't remember traveling through time no because because of the memory problems yeah and so he's so he's just like i just have to go stop dr reeves well he also wants to again very similar to robocop he, he's trying to remember who he was as a yes, human that's as true. a person before the operation yeah so that's part of like the revenge story so uh dr hunter says look i'll come with you and he's like no it's too dangerous and she she's like i'm good with technology just help me and i really like the fact that like Denise Crosby is a great actress and she she's never 
Like, even though she kind of plays... Um, I don't want to say your damsel in distress. She always plays like a, a female who does get into danger, but because she's in that dangerous situation anyway. And this Colonel Hunter, she plays really well. Going up against like three other male leads, four if you can include Dr. Reeves, who only turns up at the end. She does hold her own against the other characters. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like this boy, uh, like this bit with Mandroid, she's just like, we're going. I'm coming with you. And so they head down to Mexico. Well, it's also the fact that she says that her spot robot was also specifically designed to find crashed missing airplanes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like, well. oh, well, it's coincidence. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's, that as well. You know, this magic little droid thing that I have no idea how you made this, made this technology. <laughs> so they end up going to Mexico, right? And yeah. this is where I got confused because they go to Mexico and then they need to find a tour guide to, to take their boat to get downriver to where they need to go. Yeah. So they go into this bar that's filled with Mexicans? Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's not a single one in there. Yeah, there's, all right, it's in South America. This, right. this, this bar is south of the border. Like, I wasn't too sure either where we were because when we have the boat chase, there's a yeah. boat chase, people. Like, I was just like, like... Are we at the Amazon rainforest? Are we in Montana? <laughs> where are we? This is, this is like... Where? We have Andrew Pine playing Fontana, who, from the looks of it, is your atypical boat captain, suave, sophisticated, but he's just he's drinking it hand his way. solo standing. Yep. And he's confronted by Betty, or by you, Betty, and her boyfriend, Maurice. And they're, they're both annoyed because Fontana just keeps, t like, taking up all of the customers that keep coming down. Which I'm like... How? He looks terrible. <laughs> like, compared to everybody in this bar, and no, there's not many people in this bar who look like you would trust them to take you down the river, I would probably go with Betty. Because, like, her boat is actually one of the better ones. But Denise Crosby kind of looks in, and she, she oh, I'm so immortal. She's like, I'm looking for the toughest guide in the bar. Immediate bar fight! Immediate <laughs> yes. bar fight! His punches are thrown, yes. chairs are smacked. It's like, what? Oh man, it was <laughs> amazing. She just walks outside. <laughs> she just buggers <laughs> off. So, like, well, let the best guide win. <laughs> even the barman gets involved. I didn't even know he had a boat. Right. <laughs> he just decided to get involved. And everybody just beats the crap out of each other. Betty puts up a hell of a fight. She takes on like a bunch of them. But she gets smacked from behind and yeah. knocked out. So yeah. it's it's only Harry Fontana to walk out of the bar afterwards. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, you know, Harry Fontana, uh, the character was originally supposed to have been played by... Tim Thomerson, ah. who unfortunately was busy on another production at the oh, time. You missed it. I know. It would have been awesome to have him have here. You missed it. <laughs> but so Fontana, I mean, the, the guy playing Fontana plays it really he, quite He does cool. a good job, though. Yeah, he does. You know, he, he's, he's not a complete coward, but he's not exactly the bravest man you, ha you have on your team. You know, he, he's pretty smart. Um, and he takes them out onto the boat and they start riding off. And everybody from the bar then jumps into their boat and we get this magnificent boat chase, which I, I, I was not expecting. <laughs> so was I not expecting this. I'm like, I'm like, how desperate are these people for work that they'd immediately get into a fist fight with anybody else who was offering a tour yeah. guide or guides down this river? Yeah. So much so they'd get angry, they'd get in their boats and chase after these potential customers. And want to kill them. And want to kill them for doing it. And it's just like, how... I was like, maybe, maybe the like Bayou Betty. You know, I, I get the feeling that she takes her tours, and 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 steals and kills them downriver. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like the movie's tone has kept it kind of well, depending on when you're watching it. You know, has kept it kind of parodish up to this point. Up to the point where Fontana's they're, they're being chased, and he throws out a, a barrel of of petrol. You know, and he pulls out his gun. And he shoots it and it destroys a boat just as two guys have jumped off. And Colonel Hunter's like, you didn't have to kill them. And he's like, what? I just gave him a, a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just kind of laughs off this potential death that he almost caused. <laughs> but then their boat breaks down and they're trying to fix it. And, and like I said, I love the fact that like Denise Crosby must have put her foot down and said, no, I'm not fucking standing in the background doing fuck all. And she says to Fontana, like, I'm good with engines. Let me fix this. And he's, he's so annoyed. And Bayou Betty and Maurice start coming along in their boat. And their boat is, like, badass. And there's this confrontation between them all. Like, 
there's no way for our heroes to get away. Unless you happen to have a mandroid on board who happens to have a torpedo launcher. Oh, I didn't know he had one of those. No, you were not. <laughs> and he fires a torpedo at Bayou Betty and blows her ass out of the water. <laughs> Which obviously takes us all by surprise at this point, including <laughs> Fontana. You know, they manage to get the boat fixed. They drive off up river. I, I will admit, there is there is a lot of padding in this movie to to kind of get everybody up to speed. You know, there's, there's many points. Like, we had the bit with Denise Crosby and the mandroid sitting down going, hey, this is what I've been up to. And then now they have it with Fontana, where they sit Fontana down and they're like, look, we're looking for this crash site. He's a mandroid. There might be an evil scientist out there. There's money in it for you if you want. <laughs> well, it, it's, um, well it, it's the moment because uh, he ends up dropping them off. He does, yeah. And she ends up finding the boat after using her, her robot yes. to, to locate the boat. But obviously, you know, Manborg can't get in there. So she climbs in there herself. <laughs> this set was so dangerous. Yeah, it was pretty cool looking, you know. The well, crash plane in the, in, in the bayou. Yeah, but I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, this is a child band production so i'm not expecting a lot of money stunt doubles insurance um i'm, a, I'm assuming this is actually a real river <laughs> i I'm don't know i'm assuming this is all real wood and reeds that are on the river and they've just plonked this this prop this yeah. prop in the water and gone hey denise swim <laughs> you know and she's like okay i can swim but i'm like Oh yeah, we're also going to, you know, make it sink as well exactly. at one point. At one point, we're going to make it sink. So you have to go under the water into it. Like, <laughs> well, she has to get rescued, doesn't she, by Fontana? Yeah. Uh, but he only agrees to do it if he can get like a, a huge share of the treasure, because clearly the only reason why they would be going downriver in this location would be for hidden treasure. That's right. This is after Fontana had he's he's dropped them off and he's buggered off and by you, Betty. And Maurice, who have been swimming in the river for I don't know how long after their boat's been blown up, have come across the two security guard brothers who are chasing the mandroid. And after mentioning the torpedo launcher, they go off in their speeding red boat. And I have no idea what the hell this the director was thinking about this sequence. Because they they confront Fontana and he's he says to them, Oh yeah, I've found two people, they're down river. I'll show you on the map where they are. And he, he chases it, he, they, he races off, he, he kind of uh, uses the fire extinguisher to spurt them off. And then as he races off in the boat, they come after him at high speeds and he dodges out of the way and you just watch this boat just fly off. <laughs> that was great, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, but you saw the like the, the barman from Terminator 2, he has to jump out of the boat. Yeah. But they can't film it the same way, so he jumps out like a shallow section and then they send the red boat flying. <laughs> But Fontana's like turned up at this point and he's like, yeah, come on then, we'll we'll head down river. And he speeds up and the mandroid fall, falls off the back. <laughs> right. Is I that we've lost him. I rewound that part because I thought, oh, somebody's grabbed him. No. He, <laughs> no. Just he, no, no, no safety measures. Just, just fell off the back. I mean, he, he does try to rescue him, though, but he resurfaces. like There's nothing but mud and swamp down there. Yeah. I can't find anything. If he is, he's he's sinking into the dirt. That's it. And and, and Do oh. Dr. Hunter's like, really upset about this because she really wanted to help him. But they, they obviously need to find what the mandroid was looking for. And so they head into the jungle and they come across some cavemen. And were revealed that the cavemen must have been brought through by Dr. Reeves' time machine right? and have now settled. And so now they have to obviously go and stop, or they have to stop Dr. Reeves because he's going to be using the time machine to travel back in time and change the past, which is really, really bad. And while this is happening, uh, the, the, the mandroid has come across the super ninja, Conan Lee, playing Kuji. Uh, Conan Lee, I have to just say is one of my all-time favorite kung fu artists he hasn't actually done a lot but one movie i always remember him from is tiger on the beat with nice. Ch uh, chow yun fat which has this amazing chainsaw sword fight in with conan lee and while i was wikiing this movie i was like what happened to this guy what you know i saw him in some 80s movies and then he's not in anything more and it's because he stopped acting to take care of his his sick mum at the time and here he is in Eliminators, talking <laughs> to the mandroid 
about his father. His father was Dr. Takada. Right, yeah, so he's on his own revenge uh, spree That's as well. It. The Mandroid's like, I'm sorry, your father is dead. I'm like, oh, man. You know, now we've got to, got to get our team together to face Dr. Reeves. So now we need to go and rescue Nora and Harry from these cannibal cavemen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, 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 they've set up, like, this fire pit and... Uh, Fontana's just like, kiss me, kiss me. And yeah. she's like, whoa. He, he, he's so smooth. I thought he was going to make a run for it at this point. Right, right. But no, he uh, he slips some bullets into her hand. Yeah. And he's like, like when I give the signal, chuck these into the fire. It's like, okay. I was like, this doesn't even work. When you took bullets into a fire, do they just fire off in random directions? I thought, or do they I just make know. loud pop noises? Man, when the caveman was dropping the yellow smoke and the yellow smoke was just coming from the floor, I'm like... Is this magical caveman magic do dust? Again. When the caveman was dropping the yellow smoke all on the floor and then it was just coming up from the bottom of the screen, I'm like, is that magical caveman yellow dust? <laughs> well, I guess so. <laughs> like, what is going on? But they used the dust. Like, I'm, I'm assuming it's some old school sulfur or whatever. But they fell on the fire and they, they escaped. But I love the fact that the older, you know, the alpha caveman, he didn't, he liked Denise Crosby, but he, he slapped yeah. the ass of Fontana. <laughs> Right. I just wish I'd gotten to know you better. So, uh, would you kiss me goodbye? That is the cheapest line I've ever heard. Hey, I don't want that to be the last face I see. So now the team have gotten back together and they find the raft. And I loved this bit because we find out that the mandroid has boosters in his feet. <laughs> He's like got utilities for everything. <laughs> I know. That's amazing. And he gives them that extra boost to head up the jungle, you know, so that they can get closer to Reeves' compound. And then they're confronted by jungle bikers. <laughs> it was like a Nintendo game, this movie. Right. Like, there was just stage after stage, battle after battle. Like, this jungle biker, biker sequence was just so messed up. These trikes are driving around. You know, no way that any of the actors were on there. They all were stunt drivers. For sure, yeah, yeah. And then Fontana has got to get that reflective shield thingy out, you know, to help the mandroid shoot his, reflect his laser off it so he can uh, yeah. shoot the guy in the back. Yeah. The mandroid had driven up. And just hit this ledge and then collapse on the side. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I guess he's on foot from here. <laughs> and then that's what we get. It's just a massive, you know, base kind of shootout once they get everybody in into the facility. They split up, though. Yes. But but badly. Well, yeah. Manborg finds the secret, like, tunnel entrance for them to go into. Yeah. But he's like, why well, can't I get in there? So I'm going to go to the front gate. <laughs> Do I love... Dr. Reeves is a mad genius with a hidden fortress in the middle of the jungle and time travel technology and cyber technology. Yeah. But he hires just random guys know, with guns. I know. It's like none of these guys are even in uniform. No. They're it's not... just like they're just average Joes just here to work. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, guard this building. Like, like are, they, are they Mexican cartel? Are they just... <laughs> Mercs? Are they farmers? Is this a farm that you Are they out of time? Are they <laughs> trancers? <laughs> yeah, I would have preferred trancers. <laughs> trancer soldiers. But that's it. These, they, 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 these guards just kind of wander off. And, and Manborg breaks this tunnel and says, Here, enter through here. And he sends the, the, the our, he, he sends Kuji, uh, Fontana and Hunter into this tunnel. And they almost get caught. But they manage to get past. And then they break into a room and they realise seeing all the Roman artifacts that he's picked up, which isn't really a lot. No, <laughs> it's like enough, if, it's enough. If, it's enough for selling to yeah. buy more farmers to guard your base? I don't know. But Fontana, the idiot, picks one up and it sets off an alarm. And the editing for the sequence was just so amazing because <laughs> you're stealthing into a base, you're infiltrating. The mandroid hasn't even got to his point yet. Right. You know, they're like, oh, he must be at the front gate now. We must get into a position. And he sets off the alarm. So the next scene we see is the mandroid walking up to the gate with no alarm on. Right. He just walks up and he's like, Reeves, I've returned. And Reeves is like, ha ha, did you take me for a fool? Because Roy Del Trice, I get, is like a really classical actor. Sure. You know, so he's doing his best evil villain voice over the tannoy. I, I totally forgot his face in the smoke. Yes, when they when because the uh, the little robot 
spot ends up malfunctioning. Yeah. And uh, and Kuji ends up smashing it with a sword, breaking it, and then out of the smoke, I, when I saw the smoke rising, I was like, is this the ghost in the machine? <laughs> yes. I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's, it's a holographic smoke face of Dr. Reeves warning them to stay away. It's amazing. <laughs> but Dr. Reeves, you know, he says to the Mandroid, ha ha, did you take me for a fool? You would never stop us. We've got your prisoners. <laughs> and he, he pulls the team out and he puts them down and the man droid's just like, shit. You know, how am I supposed to deal with this whole situation? But it just turns into a massive shootout. You know, they the guards are just being laser blasted left, right and centre. Fontana and, 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 and Hunter, they're just taking all their... Everybody here is just eliminating everybody. And so Dr. Reeves, asked, after all of his guards have been killed, he comes out looking like the final boss from Doom Eternal. <laughs> he's wearing like modified red cyborg armor with the roman shield you know he's got it he's got this whole plan to return to the roman uh era and proclaim himself the new caesar right and basically just take over the world and so he just starts blasting the shit out of um, out, out of the mandroid, mandroid. yeah <laughs> and it's like the th- you know the, you know the it's everyone else are hiding and yeah. uh, and they're like we gotta help Mandroid and Denise Crosby's just like no wait he's got this yeah yeah he's <laughs> and got it this. cuts back to him just getting obliterated Fucking it's just like him. oh no he doesn't got this yeah. and he gets killed and Fontana's like we should help and so <laughs> right? they jump up and they get encased in this fucking plasma bubble. And the plasma bubble starts, starts to shrink, shrink. Yeah. starts to kill them. And Reeves is just like, ha ha, I will see you later. I'm super intelligent, man. And he walks off. And the mandroid's like just got enough energy to bring himself back to life, put his hand or his gun onto the energy shield and short circuit it, short circuit it and kill himself. Which I was like, holy shit, the mandroid's dead. You know, a part of me was just like, nah, I can't be dead. That's like, this is the like... poster guy. This is the robot guy. Yeah. This, is, this is his story. We've been following him from the start. He can't be dead now. But then in fairness, him dying here is like a really cool hero ending. Yes. You know, because he'd, like he'd he... had some moments saying like, I don't want to be like this forever. Yeah. He's like, I died already. Yeah. I should already be dead. And he also says, I can't self-terminate at one point. He's like, so you'd have to do it for me? And then yeah. he you know, he gives his life here to, to save the team. And yeah, he is he is dead. Yeah. And the team race into the into after, uh, the temple after Dr. Reeves. And Dr. Reeves steps into his time machine and sends himself back. And Colonel Hunter's there frantically working on the computer, trying to stop him from landing in the Roman era. But she's unable to do it because it's locked, it, locked her out and he's landed. And Fontana just... He just punches it. He's, he, yeah, but it's this cool suave mode, like, man, I wish I'd spent time working computers and just punches it. And it fucks it up and sends uh, Reeves to, like, the, the, the Cretaceous period? Or, like, <laughs> 14 million 100 BC? <laughs> like, not long after the planet was formed. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, surely there's even no oxygen. Like, is there even an atmosphere? I, is I don't that know. better or worse? Because if he's modified himself into a cyborg and doesn't need food yeah. or air or like any of those things, and, yeah. and he has the technology, he could literally just change the past from there. But they all go, ha ha ha, frozen high five. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> technically, if, if he had changed the future, there present would have been altered unless well, it was an alternate timeline or maybe that's know. what the freeze frame was their future <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> only said jack death back in time yes <laughs> we need an eliminators too that's how i felt yeah the i, the know, I was like team. i need an eliminator exactly we team. have a whole team of eliminators bar like, mandroid um, and you can make a new mandroid <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> denise crosby she could she could make a new one she could take like all the technology and maybe apply it to somebody else <laughs> Like the daughter of Fontana, you know, maybe, you know, the the, the son of uh, uh, Colonel Hunter getting together, you know, like Coogee could have twins. Like we could have, like, make our own team. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Ian, what were your favourite scenes from Eliminators? I was amazed I would have so many. I honestly thought that this movie, like I said, I honestly thought this movie was going to be so bad. I was going to drag myself through it. There was a couple of moments that I did... It, it lost me because it was just padding. But then there's something funny. It's this movie's like fucking Cannonball Run. 
But right. in the in the jungle, if Chuck Norris didn't want to, do, if Chuck Norris did a Cannibal Run movie, the, the Mandroid and his wheels, his pimping ass wheels. You know, whenever you see him driving around just shooting guards with his laser, like that's badass, man. <laughs> you know, Arnie has nothing on that. Like, how easy would it been for him to drive around looking for John Connor if he just taken his legs off and slapped himself on some wheels? <laughs> Uh, the missile to the wall when he's trying to escape because, like, the gate's there, but the mandroid's, like, he's been shot at this point and he's like, no, I can't take the gate. I'm going to missile the wall right next to it <laughs> and shoots the wall and then drives through it and goes out the wall. Fair like, enough. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you've got a budget, you're like, we need to show how badass this guy is. Missile launcher. Him using stealth to infiltrate, to speak to Colonel Hunter, like Gary said, it's just a coat and a cloak. And some knockout gas. But at least he's trying. True, true. He could just snap next and stuff like that. But he's got knockout gas. And her judo chopping. Like, I wish Denise Crosby had judo chopped a lot more people <laughs> in the movie. But she tries to judo chop him and hurts her hand. She's like, ah! And he just turns around like, huh. <laughs> the bar fight. You know, I'm looking oh, for the yeah. toughest guy in this bar, and it's just a bar fight. You can't go wrong with a bar fight in a movie. And the fact that Fontana is the last guy just to smash the head, walk out, leading into the, the boat chase, and then the, tor the torpedo launch, which then leads into the red boat chase with the two security guards. The fucking, I don't know who they are, they're brothers. But I remember one of them was getting choked by Dr. Reeves with his electro lasso. Yeah, don't forget, he then also gets uh, a shot to the nuts as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that electro lasso, they used that in Bullet Storm. Right. That's where they stood. This, this movie influenced so much. Denise Crosby getting changed. Oh. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but there's many things I never thought I'd ever see. And then you take it off from your list. And you're like, <laughs> hell yeah. And the way the movie kind of made it, made me feel like it was awkward, but we were all awkward in the same moment. Sure, You know, sure. Fontana felt awkward, and then the mandroid kind of felt awkward. And there's that bit where the spot comes down and floats down next to Fontana. And Fontana's like, what's this? <laughs> Wait, you know what? Don't tell me. Because he's been told about the time travel and the mandroid and everything else up to this point. Fontana's cheap kiss line. <laughs> it was so smooth. He was so well delivering his lines that, like, he he lulled me in that he was going to run away and leave all these cavemen away, and then he just slips these three bullets into her hand, and I'm like, you couldn't have done that yourself. Right, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> like, you just had to kiss Denise Crosby to, to be able to pull it off. Scaring the bros off after the jungle bikes. Like, they, they, they have all these chase sequences, and these two security guards, they never get killed or hurt or badly injured. And after the bike sequence, both the, the fat barman and the kind of Mexican guy, they both equally get, like, confronted. I think the guy... They've got, like, a disintegration ray beam yes! gun. Yes, yes, oh, that gets blown up, and they get killed yes. with it. That's right. But, the, like, the guy's... Hit the, uh, the Mexican guy he pulls out this little knife and confronts Denise Crosby <laughs> and then Kuji pulls out his samurai sword and just kind of shows off and he just runs away <laughs> he just runs that. away <laughs> it's fucking brilliant the warning in the smoke I mean Spot had been sent off a number of times to scout out areas and then this one time he goes off and Colonel Hunter gets a bit worried and when he comes back he kind of attacks them and Kuji has to smash him and then Dr. Reeve's face comes out the smoke and you're like what how? How are you doing that? How is it holographic technology? Is it like nanobots? I don't, I don't know, people. It just, he talks through the smoke. Infiltrating the base and Fontana pulling up the gold and setting off the alarm. But then the very next sequence, no alarm being on. And the mandroid <laughs> just like, yeah. Reeves, I'm here. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that, there are so many great moments in the film. Like you've literally just recapped the whole film again here. I'm like, I'm trying to think if there's any other scenes that really stand out, and I'd just be like, no, you know, watching the mandroid on treads, really good. The bar fight yeah. into the boat chase with the explosions, Kuji fighting with the nunchuckers. Oh yes, the mandroid with the feet propelled boat. Yes. You know, the, the, oh, 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 there's this one bit where they're, where they're doing the, uh, where they're sneaking into the base. Yeah. And there's a big fan spinning. Yes. And Coogee looks at it and he's like, ninja mode, activate. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he 
<laughs> and you're just like, how the f did he do that? Because he's Ryu Hayabusa, mate. He's a super ninja. <laughs> well, do you recommend Eliminators? Fuck yeah, I do. I, If you'd asked me 20 years ago if I recommend this movie, it would have been a massive hell no. But I didn't know what I was expecting, what I wanted. I don't know where I was. I keep finding myself in these little moments where I think I know how a film's going to make me feel. And then I sit down and I watch it and I go, you know what? That, may that didn't make me feel what I thought it would. And this what is what happened with Eliminators. Like I said, when it came out, it probably bombed. You know, people have ever, they've seen it and they've gone, I never want to talk about that movie ever again because it was a bad experience. But I watched it and I loved every moment of it. It was like a Nintendo Entertainment System video game on screen. It was like if the A-Team had an actual movie in the fucking 80s. It's got a Mandroid. It's got Denise Crosby. It's got Fontana. It's got a super fucking ninja. It's got lasers, explosions, side boob. It's like, there's Bayou Betty. If you can find a bad thing about this movie, then go right the fuck ahead. But wait 20 years and watch it again. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I got to recommend Eliminators. This is such a fun film, packed with explosions and bar fights, robots, manborgs, ninjas, cavemen, time travel, mad scientists, laser beams, boat chases. It had it all. And yet, yeah, this was on a budget. But the stunts were effective and the, the mandroid on treads was awesome to see in motion. <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> I think we can all agree the story was, well, insane. Yes. But it was an easy revenge plot filled with colourful characters, crazy ideas and humorous dialogue. The acting was, well, so-so for the most part. And you know, everyone did a decent job with Denise Crosby, the obvious standout here. Mm. This is also a rather bloodless film in that the deaths are not graphic, uh, as you might expect in like a Charles Band production, uh, and there's no real nudity or harsh language. It's pretty much a good family film filled with adventure on a, on a river backdrop. So yeah, it's cheap, it's corny, it's dated, but it's still fun, entertaining, and worth a watch just to see Mandroid, Mercenary. Scientist, ninja, each one a specialist. Together, they are Eliminators. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Shut up and drive. You got it, big guy.